Hi, and welcome into this video where we're going to cover a requested question um, in the subject of geometry. As you can see at the top, it, we're talking about solving similar with similar triangles. And the major, you could say, concept that underlines or underpins this is the triangle mid-segment theorem. So let's just get acclimated with the question at hand. There's several parts we're going to look into um, and work out. And then we're going to talk about that concept. So we're given a triangle and thank you to the person providing the, the image. It's really, really helpful. So the major triangle, as we can see, is A, C, E. And what we're told of this triangle is that we have two midpoints, B and D. And between that is a line. All right. And so that is what we're going to call our mid segment. And it says um, the midpoints of line AC and line EC, respectively, telling us that um, of the definition of a midpoint, those points are cutting AC and EC into equal halves. Always remember that. So that's going to go right in line with the theorem as well. So after understanding or you know establishing that piece of it about the midpoints, we then realize that the mid segment is also cutting the whole figure into equal parts, you could say. So whenever we talk about mid anything, right, even in our everyday language, whenever we say midway, think of it like halfway, and we tend to think of it as cutting something into equal halves. So that's essentially what's going on here as well. Think about the major triangle is cut into equal parts. And that's the reason why we can say that the smaller triangle as we'll, we'll speak of in the theorem, is just half of the larger triangle, okay? So the mid-segment is, par is parallel to one of the sides. And in this case, in this problem, we see the mid-segment BD is parallel to the side AE, right? And with that comes two major key points that's gonna help us through uh, this particular pro uh, set of problems. So first and foremost, you can then consider that the angles um, of those two segments are congruent, all right? Not only that, at the, uh, the last part of this list of problems, right, there's a lot to do here, um, it tells us that the triangle CBD, CDB, whichever way you want to call it, is an isosceles triangle. Well, how do we know that to be the case? Well, we can go back to the original triangle that is ACE. ACE is therefore also an isosceles triangle. Okay, so that also can explain why those angles would be congruent. And then not only that, the mid segment is half of the parallel side as in terms of its length. So when we talk about the length of B to D, we can represent that as half of A to E. Another way to look at it is the length of A to E is double the length of B to D, okay? So with all that being said, all of that is gonna be very helpful when it comes to solving each of these problems. And just a heads up, you may have already recognized this by looking at it, okay? Each one is going to be uh, uh, represented or uh, approached as independent problems. So not one is going to lead into the other. They all stand on their own as separate uh, things to work with and look for, okay? So let's start with number one. So number one is telling us some information about the length of A to E and D to B. So the length, the side A to E has a length of 4x plus 8. So we're given the uh, this expression with a variable. So there's a piece that, that is missing. Of course, we're gonna look for that because it says, then what is X? So this is just the expression of what would lead us, we're gonna eventually find, right? <laughs> lead us to the simplified number of representing that length. Now D to B is given um, an actual number, a simplified number, and it's just 18. So we're gonna utilize the theorem that's to the right on screen in order to figure out um, how to set up this situation 
in order to solve for x. And then we're going to basically check it and show how it then relates to the links that we're talking about here, right? So once again, we're going to apply the theorem as you saw to the right. That is A to E is double B to D, or you can think of it as the length B to D, or they say D to B, doesn't really matter, right? Is half of A to E. Now, in my notes, when I work this out, I actually use this one because, you know, sometimes you want to work with fractions, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so I decided, hey, why not I use, you know, the, the, the whole number rather than the fraction. But it is up to you. You get to the same answer both ways. OK, so A to E is 4X. Let me label this number one. So A to E is 4X plus 8 and is equal to 2 times the length 18. So uh, let me let me say this before we move forward. The hardest part when it comes to problems like this, whether it's straightforward algebra or it's an application problem, word problem, typically the hardest part is setting it up. And it may not seem like it at first, but just remember that you've worked a lot with algebraic steps where you're solving an equation or you're simplifying an expression. You've done it so many times, it's almost second nature to you. So just keep that in mind. You already know what to do at this point. Okay. So I just like to give you that, uh, you know, moment of courage. Okay. Because this here really is the easy part. The hard part was setting it up and knowing what theorem or what concepts, definitions to apply. All right. So here again, we have the easy part. So now we're just going to work this out. I'm going to start with simplifying the right side real quick because I see that's 36. Okay, and now we're going to move the 8 over. Simplifying the left side down to 4x. And then that there is 28. And when we divide both sides by 4, we see what x is. Right, so x is 7. Now, that's pretty much our answer. That's all they wanted for the first one. But let's just walk backwards, or not backwards, but look back at the starting point that we had, right? Basically, how do we set it up? And let's actually clarify that this makes sense. So in this particular problem, we're told that 4x plus 8 represents the length of A to E. Now, if we plug in 7, we'll see what it actually is. So 4 times 7 again, we saw that's 28. 28 plus 8, 36. So we're basically just walking back at that point. And so this, right, was worked out here to show that the answer x is the correct solution for that specific expression. But not only that, we can see how it relates to length b to d. So we're told d to b, b to d is 18. Well, 18 is half of 36. So this checks out, all right, as it applies to this triangle and the triangle mid-segment theorem, okay? So that takes care of number one. Now, number two is talking about angles now. Okay, and I meant to, oh, actually, never mind. I was gonna say I meant to uh, draw on the triangle, but I already did that. So I'm going back to the original picture here. We're going to just replace what we have from the last problem with information, the new problem. So you're kind of thinking or treating it as if it's a new triangle with new stuff. All right. So it says in number two, if if the angle measure of A plus the angle measure of E is 108 degrees and the angle measure CBD, so we'll just call that simply um, let me write over here, or better yet, I'll rewrite it. So CBD can be thought of as just simply angle B, and angle CDB can be thought simply as angle D. So that angle measure is an expression of 5x plus 11, and we're told that the angle CDB is the expression 6x minus 2. And they want us to find this angle, angle A, okay? 
So uh, we're going to actually rewrite the information as given and then consider um, some important concepts that will help us solve this problem. All right, so they first tell us that the angle A and angle E give us the sum of 108 degrees. So we're told that those two, those two angles add up and equal the sum 108. And then we're given information about B and D, but they don't tell you this, rather they expect you to analyze the figure and recognize something important that will help us solve it. And that is through the mid-segment theorem and even through, you could say, similar triangles, right? The fact that A and B, those angles are congruent. They're exactly the same. You can tell by just the structure itself, right? But then we'll also see through solving it. Same goes for angle D and E. So we're going to make that note real quick. All right. That angle A is congruent to angle B. And angle E is congruent to angle D. Well, if we're saying that angle A and B, or excuse me, angle A and E add up to equal 108 degrees, and E and, and A can be replaced with B and D. Therefore, angle B and angle D, when you add them, also give you 108 degrees. So this is the key right here, because they give us information about those angles, but we have to work through that in order to get to angle A. So the measure of B again was 5x plus 11. And the measure of D was 6x minus 2. And I'm just double checking that that is the case. So now that we have that in place, we can go ahead and find first X in order to then find A. Okay. So remember, we're going to eventually do the setup like this. Angle B is equal to angle A. Therefore, angle A is also 5x plus 11. All right, so we'll find x soon, and then we'll fill, plug, plug in x to then figure out what is a, since that's what they want, okay? So I'm gonna actually make a note of that. We wanna know what is a. All right, so let's find x. We set up 5x plus 11, and it's adding to 6x minus 2. You could bring them in with parentheses and then remove the parentheses by simplifying them just by the uh, distrib distribution of 1. We just get back the same thing, so not too much of a hassle with that. Okay, and now we're going to combine like terms all the way across the equal sign as well. And so we get 11x equals 99. When we divide 11 on both sides, we get x equals 9. So now that we know what x is, we can solve for a. So the angle a is going to be the measure 45 plus 11, 56 degrees. And we're done. All right. Moving on to number three, it says there, if a, b is 2x plus 5, and I didn't mean to do that, okay, b, c is 3x minus 6, and b, d is 4x minus 12, what is a to e? All right, so we got a good amount of information here. Let's label stuff. So the length let me do it like this. The length of A to B <clears throat> is 2x plus 5. And the length from A, uh, B to C is 3x minus 6. We also have the length from B to D for number 3, which is 4x minus 12. And they want to know what is A to E. All right, so at first glance, it might seem like a lot or tricky, but it's really not. Remember, midpoint, mid-segment is a very helpful and important definition to keep in mind, really. Because, again, midpoint means it's cutting something into equal halves. 
Well, if we look at the A to C side of the triangle, the, main, the bigger triangle, and they're talking about these two segments that make up A to C, well, B as the midpoint is cutting A to C at equal halves. Well, that means A to B and B to C are congruent. So that's the first part. And I'm going to make note of that. Okay. So A to B is congruent to B to C. All right. So when we find X, we're going to then use the same X value that we find and plug it into the X value variable of the other expression for B to D. Why? Because it's the same letter, <laughs> literally, right? So with that being said, once we find X, we're going to plug the X value into the segment expression representing B to D. All right, so let me rewrite the information again for us for number three so we can see it here. All right, and we have A to B is 2x plus 5, b to c, 3x minus 6, b to d, 4x minus 12, and we're looking for, well, I guess the measure fine for sure, but let's just, just say that. So when we find b to d, remember we're going to then use the mid-segment mid theorem for triangles. So that means B to D, or the, let's flip it around. To get A to E, we're going to take a double of the segment B to D, right? <clears throat> so that's what we exercised in the first problem. All right, so now we're going to start with number one and work through each part to get to the end point of what we're looking for. All right, so we're going to set up A to B and b to c equal to each other and solve for x. Okay, so we're going to move around the equal sign to combine like terms. So I'm going to move the x's to the right, the numbers to the left, just to keep them positive. Okay, so x equals 11. So now that we know what x is, we can take that value and plug it into the expression for b to d. Again, because it's the same letter, right? If we see the same thing, well, then what I can plug into X is what I found for X and the other problems. So it's all linked in this particular problem. And it's that straightforward, right? So now we have uh, 4 times 11 minus 12. So that's 44 minus 12, which is 32. So now we're on the last step where we're going to take that value and double it. This is going to represent, right, the, the bottom leg or segment of the larger triangle that is parallel to the mid-segment BD. So 2 times 32 is 64. Therefore, the answer is 64, which represents the length of A to E. All right. So now on to the next one, number four. If A to E equals 12X plus two and B to D equals 3X plus 10, what is B to D? Okay, so let me write out the information first and then we'll talk real quick about what you can do in this video. Also meant to say, say this in the beginning, but I, again, there is a lot going on. So please feel free to run back the video. This is why I like doing videos for wise and questions, because that way you're seeing it in real time, not just on screen right now, you're seeing it happening over time. And not only that, you have the, um, the luxury of running it back or slowing it down or speeding it up, whatever you wanna do to help you in getting through the material. But now notice that this sounds very similar to number one, except now we're not just looking for X, we're looking for the actual um, length for one of the two parallel lines. So I encourage you to just pause this video 
and try out number four on your own and see what you can what you can do. See if you get the same thing as me and we'll compare notes in this video. All right. So I'm going to keep moving forward and you can see I've labeled our triangle, replacing it with the last problem. And let me move down to get some some space to work it out. All right. So for, for this one, we're given the information that <clears throat> we know an expression representing the length A to, A to E and the expression representing the length B to D. And they want us to find, I'll say measure of <laughs> B to D, right? Um, and we're gonna definitely use the mid-segment theorem again. Because all we're dealing with here are the mid-segment and the line parallel to that mid-segment, whereby one is half of the other or vice versa, one is double the other. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use this formula or this way of looking at it. Remember, you could also solve it this way. They both lead to the same result. I just like to sometimes take a break from the fractions or, you know, it's just a little bit easier. <laughs> So it, it helps to have it all whole numbers. And so with that, I set it up with those expressions. All right. So now we're going to simplify it down, figure out what is X, and then plug it back into the B to the expression to see what it actually is as a, as a length value. All right. So we're going to start with distributing the two. And on the right side, we get... 6x plus 20, and then we're going to cross through or over the uh, equal sign and combine like terms. So I'm going to move the x's to the left. So that's 6, 6x subtract on both sides, giving you 6x. And I'm going to subtract 2 um, on, the both si on both sides, giving us 18. And when we divide both sides by 6, we get 3. So x is 3. And so when we plug that into the expression for b to d, we'll, we'll finally see what it is. I'm going to plug it into a to e as well, so we can see um, back to back compare their values that it, as it relates to the mid-segment theorem. Okay, so the length of b to d, nine plus ten gives us nineteen. All right, and then considering a to e which is 12x plus 2. So 12 times 3 is 36, plus 2, 38. And if you do a quick check on paper in your calculator, you'll see half of 38 is 19. So this checks out really well. So how we set it up relates to the end result um, correctly and properly, right? That's what we want to see. Everything is lined up well. Right, and it, it all relates to each other. All right, so we're finally at the end of this long laundry list of things, right? Um, all related to this triangle. So now we get to an interesting point. All right, it says if triangle A, uh, C, B, D, so we already talked about this in the beginning, this triangle is an isosceles. Well, that means that two of the sides are congruent and two of the angles are congruent. They even took the time to tell us, hey, by the way, angle C is 100 degrees. Now, this is not going to play at all into working it out mathematically. It just is giving us, I guess you could say, more confirmation or uh I guess, a factoid to show us that it's an isosceles. So that way, if we wanted to look at the other angles, we could, right? If you took 100, subtracted from 180, you get 80 degrees. If you take half of 80, you get 40 degrees. Well, that's going to represent angle B and angle D. And just like before, B and A are congruent, D and E are congruent. Therefore, they're also 40 degrees because you got the smaller triangle inside the bigger triangle that it's similar to. Well, not only that, you still have this, these midpoints. Let me use a better color than that so it shows up. Okay. And these midpoints cut in half the sides AC and CE. 
So not only would we say that of the smaller triangle, isosceles triangle, we have the two sides, B, C, C, D, that are uh, congruent. So is the side A to C. Um, let me use two tick marks because I'm going to use a one tick mark somewhere else. And C to E are also congruent. And then the midpoints make A, B, and B, C equal to each other. So therefore, the length A to B and B to C are the same. A to B and C to D are also the same. D to E and A to B are the same. D to E and B to C are the same. So all of the smaller segments, <clears throat> let's write it out. All of the smaller segments are all the same. All right. And that's a major point because now we look into the information we're given. All we're given, all we know for number five is CB has a length of, it's over here, has a length of 8x plus 7. And then they jump on the other side of the triangle to tell us that D to E is 7x plus 8. Right? How are we supposed to solve for A to C, which is back on the other side? Like That's what they want. That's what they want right there. Well, if you knew what A to B was, that'd be great. But how can you confirm that it will help us solve or find, right, the information? Okay. So what's interesting is if we knew what this was, which you could probably say that, and now I'm seeing something else too, because I've worked it out before in one way. And sometimes when you see something again, you consider another way to solve it. So this is like live, for sure, real time <laughs> change. Um, when we solve for X, and I don't know if it's going to produce the same thing, but when we solve for X, we're going to get a simple number, right? Very simple number um, that then leads to a very interesting set of numbers afterwards. If we set 8X plus 7 and 7X plus 8 equal to each other and solve for X, and then we, we uh, plug back in that X value, as you'll see in a moment. It's interesting the, the number that we get from those expressions. But I wonder if we'll get the same if, say, we think of A to B as also 8X plus 7. Can we get the same value? So I'm going to show you something a little bit separate or different from the notes I was going to, to showcase to solve this problem. But let's start back with what we talked about. So these will definitely be congruent. Um, and then this was C to D, D to E. And we're looking for that angle. We're looking for the, the length of A to C. Okay, so we're given C to B and D to E, all right? And now what we would do then, as we talked about, is we would set them equal to each other. Let's solve this first, and then I'm going to just grayscale this. Let's try and see if we get the same thing. If we were to set 8x plus 7 equal to each other, this is basically A to B and B to C, if we were to think of it like that, okay? But this here is, uh, sorry, let me make that C, B, and D, E, that we're setting equal to each other. So this is what I initially did, okay? For real, for real. All right, now when we go to solve it, I move the X's to the left side and the numbers to the right side. So that's gonna be X equals one. So again, like I said, very simple number. Um, I'm curious, though, if we get the same thing to maybe confirm that it really is all three sides are the same. Because the interesting thing is we may look at this and first glance think they're different. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, they, they look to me as if they are different. So we may get the same 
value of x, we may not. So let's try it out. Actually, you can already see probably. When I subtract 8x on both sides, what do we get? Zero. Zero times anything is zero. So regardless of seven subtracting over, excuse me, that's, that's also zero, right? It all ends up being just zero. That's not going to help us. So I'm so glad that I did this because this shows that we would not think of B to D. Sorry, not B to D. We're not even talking about the segment right now. Um, we would not think of B to C, 8x plus 7, and A to B having the same uh, expression. Instead, what it would be is A to B is equal to, let me make it three tick marks, is equal to D to E. Right. And this is why it's good to kind of just look at it a couple times. I don't think it's wrong to to review something multiple times because you, you sometimes we miss things or we miss we misunderstand things. So it's good to reread something. And you can see, you know, sometimes it's hard to go off of just the figure, but this one's kind of showing itself that with the mid segment. It's um, it's really not making uh, it's really not showing the segments A to B and B to C exactly the same, and this is interesting because I noticed that in the very beginning when I when I picked up this problem or question set. So we're gonna just eliminate that, and now I'm questioning some of the other problems. Let's look back at something. A to B and B to C. So we said that that was congruent. What's funny though is that seemed to work. <laughs> oh, probably because it's mid. It's the midpoint definition. So it's interesting, right? Um, that in this case, with number five specifically, it doesn't. It doesn't showcase itself as. A to B and B to C are congruent, or else we would also use 8x plus 7 on both segments there. Instead, we have to use 8x plus 7 and 7x plus 8 set equal to each other. That's how we got x equals 1. Okay, so how in the world were we able to solve number 3 that way? Besides the midpoint definition, that's I think that's kind of puzzling. Um, maybe pun intended, but, uh, hmm. So I know I'm doing this video, so I don't want to take too much time, but I'm just thinking real quick, maybe is there something that we might've missed? Well, I'm not going to ponder on it too long. So if I don't come up with something at the end, feel free to leave a comment or message us at the original question. Um, if you have any further questions about that, because that would be a great discussion to have. OK, so let's finish up with number five and that will be the end of this video review. All right. So it seems that we were going with the work to the left. <laughs> OK, we're not going to worry about um, this right here. All right. So with that being said, Knowing that x equals 1, we're now going to see what is ac. All right, so ac would be, um, let me make some real, real quick notes. So we just said that a to b is actually whoops, congruent to d to e, all right, for us to be able to, that's, that is interesting. Okay, okay, okay. I think we're fine on number three and number five because we're going to see something uh, happen here that I did the notes on. <laughs> All right. That confirms what we're working with. All right. So again, midpoint definition is what's at play. We're not talking about the mid segment because we don't have anything to do with that. It's all about the midpoint. Okay. 
Now we have to say that A to B is uh, congruent to D to E in order for us to do what we did in the beginning. With that being said, A to C, as we know it, is the combination of A to B and B to C added together. Well, we know what D to E is, given now that X is one, and for us to be able to solve for A to C, we're basically gonna replace the expression for D to E to represent A to B. And that means we're going to simply add those two expressions together with X replaced with one. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have seven times one plus eight. That expression now will simplify eventually. Added to the expression representing um, B to C, or as they put it, C to B, which is 8x, so 8 times 1 plus 7. All right, so I'm going to simplify both of them, as you can see in the brackets, separately. And uh, this is going to be the astounding point. All right, so 7 times 1 is 7, plus 8, we get 15. Well, same thing on the right side of the plus sign. 8 times 1 gives us 8, plus 7 is 15. So this is why I think sometimes it's, it's, as I said before, it's hard to go off of just a figure. You have to know the information about different parts of the figure to state or claim or confirm something like these sides are congruent or they may tell you certain sides are congruent. All right. So it seems that, man, this is, if you look up, so if you look up triangle mid-segment theorem, okay, I'm going to put back the three tick marks. You'll see that in one instance, maybe one side is shown to be uh, congruent, right? The two segments that make up one side are the same. But then in other, other images, you'll probably see more so that the, the segments across from each other, right? Like what we see here are what's congruent. And that goes top and bottom between the mid-segment. But the interesting thing is, in order for us to answer this question and to get this answer, which let me go ahead and say is 30, okay, we actually get 15 and 15. So it ends up being that the sides on the, on the left side of the uh, triangle from A to B is 15, from B to C is also 15, it's literally the same side, the same length. <laughs> so it ends up being congruent in the end. And I think that's what's interesting about this problem, right? And then maybe it supports how we set up number three. But again, let us know if you have any questions. All right. And I hope that in this video, we were able to clarify these type of problems for you to help you be pre better prepared or, or be better um you know, able um, and, and confident in these type of questions, okay? And we'll see you in the next video or post um, for any other questions you have in the future.